Amen. This afternoon we have uh, our brother, Brother Paul. He's um, one of our song leaders. He's going to lead us. He came from Nigeria on a visit. And so he'll be leading us this afternoon in praises. Amen. And I Amen. hope you'll be blessed. and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he had made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease up to the end of the earth, he breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his precious word. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us into your presence, Lord, this afternoon, Lord, just to worship you and to praise your holy name, Father. Lord, it's nothing but you, Lord, the great Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, may that sweet Holy Spirit, Lord, just come down right now, Father, Lord, and Father, Lord, take over control of this place, Lord Jesus. From Lord, right here, Lord, the pulpit to the back door, Father Lord. May each and every person be engulfed in that presence, Lord. And Lord, by the time we leave here, Lord, may we say, Lord Jesus, Lord, did our hearts not burn within us as it spoke to us along the way? Speak to us along life's way today. In the name we pray and ask it for all you've done and continue to do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And God's people say, Amen. 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 Let's just sing this song, if you know it, sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Heavenly Dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. It's just a simple song. Oh, sweet Holy Spirit, oh, let's just stand and sing to the Lord, the heavenly Oh, I want to stay right here with us. Oh, feeling us with your love.
Can you ready to turn the service over now to the word? Let's just sing just one more song of my heart here on the wings of a snow white dove. God sends his pure, sweet love. A sign. We know that God sent us a prophet this day. And he brought the message. And that message each and every day keeps us through whatever we're going through. It's nothing but God's love for each and every one of us. Nothing but God's love. Oh yes. On the wings of a
as questions be answered. Lord, maybe somebody has got doubt. Let that doubt, O God Almighty, be taken away. We come to you like that man who said, Lord, help my unbelief. Oh, we want to receive, Father. Even, oh God, you to be the one that will fight our battles. To be the one that will truly be the lawyer, the advocate, the one who stand for us, Lord. Heavenly Father, we commit ourselves into your hands now. As the way shall be coming, we pray, may you minister to each and every one of us. We thank you, Father. We commit the service one more time into your hands that you may help me influence amongst us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, believe in. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints. Amen. You may take your seats for a moment. Amen. I want to greet you all this afternoon in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for your prayers. I'm getting better and better. But uh, the devil is also fighting. So I, I know that another Christian can buy saying that song. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? I know that the Lord has already won for me. Amen. So thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, I'm getting better and better. Amen. Uh, I forgot our brother's name, but Brother Abraham introduced him. Brother Paul. Amen. We want to welcome Brother Paul. Our soul leader this afternoon. Welcome Brother Paul. Amen. He's visiting Lagos uh, Sam Fellowship with Brother Abraham and uh, he's visiting uh, Scotland. Uh, I trust you're going to enjoy your visit. How long are you going to turn out? Two. Two. So one week again and then tomorrow. Oh, you should have stayed a bit longer. I really enjoyed your song service. God bless you. Thank you so much. I trust that they are looking after you. You are not missing my family. Yes, I, I know they know how to take this uh, Peter Swallow and all these good things. Praise the Lord. And I also want to welcome Roy, who is amongst us. He stays in Cowd and Beef. Amen. God bless you. I was found by Brother Lodi. I don't know the connection with you and Brother Lodi, but Brother Lodi is fellowshipping in a suicide. And he told me that, oh, there is a friend of mine who is coming. He just wants to have uh, food. Amen. To have the spiritual food. Amen. He wants to come and eat. So I said, I will be waiting for him. And uh, indeed, he is here. So God bless you. We trust to make you feel welcome. Amen. He is a local man. So I'm sure we should be able to connect with the brethren and I'm sure the Lord will bless us and will bless you also. Amen. We are happy this afternoon. I am not the one who is ministering. I deliberately was saying we have got a visiting minister so that I could keep your appetite, you know, your appetite up there. You know, it's like if 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 you are I'm, I'm sure this is very common for those that are married. If your spouse says, I'm I'm taking you out this afternoon or this evening, and they don't tell you where you're going. They don't tell you which restaurant. You'll be like, is it, is, it, is it that one? Is it that one? So I said we are going to be a visiting minister. But uh, yes, he's a visiting minister, but he's not really a visiting minister. He's just one of our brothers, a man from Aberdeen. Uh, so this afternoon, I want to welcome Brother Blessed Gambode to come and give us God's word. Announcement, but the main one is that I want the musicians to try and ramp, ramp, ramp up your practicing because we've got Christmas meetings and we also have got that afternoon where we want you to enjoy singing and to bless us as well. Uh, but the rest we shall go through it. There is a, a Sunday school announcement that will come after the preaching. So we want to give God's word all the time. And I think on my clock is just about 28 past. So I'm going to ask Brother Paul if you don't mind. Maybe give us a chorus as we welcome the minister to the pulpit. Amen. And let's rise to our feet. Let's amen the word. Amen. Let's, sing, let's sing the song. Um, we come from the east and west. They come from the lands afar. Thank you. 
bless you. Let's just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Almighty God. Lord, we love you more and more. We thank you for the song service. We thank you, Lord, for this precious time. Amen. We hear the word, Lord, your word, oh God, which is sharper than any to its word. We pray that we come and speak to us, Lord Jesus, address all our needs, Lord. Father, may you take, oh God, even the minister aside and come and minister to our hearts, you know our needs. Father, we need you indeed. We need your presence. We need your anointing. We need you to speak to us. We commit everything into your hands. In the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we give glory and honor unto your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 May I take our seats for a short while. May the Lord richly bless you. Amen. I'd like to thank Pastor for inviting me to be with you today. Amen. For this short time that's before us. Uh, I believe the Lord will help us and speak to us Amen. this afternoon. Amen. Amen. I was blessed by the song service. You know, Amen. there's something about worship. Amen. You come to the house of the Lord when you are singing in the spirit. Uh, uh, you feel your heart uh, getting close to the Lord. Amen. And Amen. the special songs. And God bless all those that sing the special songs. I mean, you've got a part, I mean, it's not just the preacher coming to preach, but uh, everyone has got a part to play, amen. amen. You know, at one time, uh, King Saul would be trapped by a demon, but amen. in those circumstances, they would call David to play skillfully, amen. and that demon would depart and he would be set free, the king would be set free. Amen. So, uh, we have been blessed by the song service, it's, it's always a blessing. Uh, to see in the spirit. Amen. Amen. At one time, Elisha, he, before he prophesied, <laughs> he Amen. had to call somebody who could play a minstrel. Yes, and yes. when they played, then the men of God prophesied. Mm. He Amen. Could Amen. prophesied because the anointing was there. Amen. So we thank God for the wonderful song service. May the Lord richly bless you. <laughs> so we want to get into God's word. Uh, I don't have anything good to bring to you. I believe you have been always hearing God's word. Eating from what the prophet has said, the pastor was preaching to you always. But today I just want to echo from those things that have been preached. Amen. I uh, would like to read from the book of um, Second Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. If you can stand to the reading of the word. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 But I fear lest by any means if the serpent be killed if through his subtlety uh, so your minds should be corrupted uh, from the simplicity that is in Christ Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word as you take our seats Amen. So this afternoon I just want to speak about uh, the simplicity of God requires us to make a choice Amen. Amen. Uh, God is so great, so mighty, that He's the one that created uh, the universe. He made the heavens, He made the earth. But in all that might, uh, with all that greatness, it requires you and me to make a choice. Amen. He could just make some choices for us, but He allows us to be on this earth and to choose what we want. Amen. Even in the beginning, in the Garden of Eden, uh, when God placed men on this earth, He allowed them to make a choice. You just put uh, death and life, and they had to choose between death and life. You put the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of, uh, of good and evil, and said, uh, This you are not eat from this tree. But men, after being given that choice, uh, you, you find out that Eve went and partook of that uh, tree, and took that fruit, and brought death upon the humankind. So, ever since, God has allowed men to make a choice. Amen. Amen. With all his might, his greatness. And, but he allows you and me to make a choice. Amen. So, we are faced with a decision uh, this afternoon to make a choice uh, before God. Amen. We make different choices in life. Uh, there's a time where uh, you have to choose a life partner. There's a time where you have to choose uh, the kind of job that you want. There's a time 
where you have to choose even the kind of food that you want to eat, you make a choice. Amen. So everywhere, the world is full of choices, Amen. but you need to make the right choice. Amen. So I believe the Lord helping us who just move with this subject, God allowing us to make the right choices. Amen. Amen. And I, I, I believe it's by the grace of God to be here because it's a choice that you've made. Amen. You could have been at your home, sleeping or enjoying yourself, but you made a choice to be here by the grace of God. Amen. When I see you sitting where you are, it's victory. <laughs> because the choices are not easy to make. Sometimes you think you are making the right choice, yet it's a wrong choice. So always to make the right choice, it takes the grace of the living God. Amen. So we are saying God in all his might, eh, he requires us to make a choice. Amen. Eh, he hides himself in simplicity, but in all his simplicity, he requires us to make a choice. Being the mighty God, the great creator, it made the great things, mighty wondrous things. He made this earth so mighty, so that even they say uh, this earth uh, revolves around the sun, but we don't see the earth revolving around the sun in such speed. We just it's in the quietness. So that's how great God is. And the, imagine the sun, how big it is, and it emits the light. Every day, there's a day, the sun comes out, and uh, the plants thrive with that sunlight. And we human beings, we need that sunlight, the greatness of God. Amen. But the nature of God always goes like that. God needs mighty works, but he hides himself in that simplicity. Hallelujah. It requires us to make a choice. Hallelujah. And one time there was a man by the name of uh, Cleopas. And he was with his friends, they were chatting, uh, they were going to the mouse. If they were chatting, they were talking about him. <laughs> as we are talking about him this afternoon. Amen. Amen. So as they were chatting, they were talking about him. Uh, they had heard that he was supposed to be the king, but he was crucified. So they were wondering how now he has been crucified and we were expecting him to be king. What will happen then? So as they were chatting, the Lord just appeared to them, just in simplicity. Amen. When they saw him, they just thought just a common man because usually when the Lord does things, he hides himself in simplicity in such a way that if you are not careful, we miss him. <laughs> so they were chatting with him, he was joining them, they were speaking, and he was started reproving them, speaking the word, reproving them, <laughs> referring back to the, back to the word. And, but there was a time when the Lord Jesus appeared as if he wanted to pass by, he wanted to go, and as they had arrived where they were going, but they had to make a choice. Yeah. They had to compare with you, to deal with them, hallelujah. Amen. And that was a very important part in their life, to make that choice, Amen. to invite him so that he could deal with them, hallelujah. Amen. They had to, had to preach the gospel, they had, had to speak to them, but they had, had, they had to make a choice to invite him to deal with them, hallelujah. Amen. And that choice gave some rewards. Amen. They made a very important choice, the right choice. And that choice gave some rewards, hallelujah. Amen. And the breaking of the bread, they realized that this is the same Jesus that they were talking about. Amen. And he appeared to them, he manifested himself to them. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm saying this afternoon, we have to make a choice. Amen. There are uh, several choices that we have to make in life, but we should always refer back to God and learn by the Spirit of God in making the choice. Because when God blessed us here on earth, he gave us what we call free moral agents. He allowed us to make a choice. Hallelujah. To take the choice that you want to make a decision of the things that you want yourself. And you can choose, uh, you can choose either death, you can choose uh, either death or life, whatever you want. God allowed you to make a choice. Hallelujah. At one time, uh, the prophet of God, Abraham, had to make a choice. God appeared to him and uh, he called him. He was among his people, they were uh, worshipping idols and doing all sorts of things. But when God appeared to him, he called him from his land and he promised him to show him a land. He was leading him to a land that he wanted to show him. Hallelujah. Amen. And when God called Abraham, he had to make a choice whether to follow God or to follow the idols. Amen. Hallelujah. But Abraham had to make a choice.
another choice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It didn't end there. God allowed him to go. He made the right choice, but he had also to make uh, another choice. Amen. Right. God, after waiting for a long time, God uh, had given him a promise about the coming son Isaac. You know about the story of Isaac. He was supposed to come. Abraham had waited for so long. But when Isaac came, uh, God told the prophet Abraham to go and sacrifice his son Isaac. Amen. So, given that word, Abraham had to make a choice whether to stay with the word or to obey uh, what the flesh wants because uh, it was contrary to the demands of the uh, uh, flesh but he had to stay with God's word but he had to obey God and obey what God wanted him to do Amen. to go and sacrifice his, his son Isaac but Abraham paid heed to what the Lord wanted he made the right choice to obey God's word and God appeared to him hallelujah so when we make the right kind of, kind of choices God always stands this weight. He always begs his weight. No matter whatever the circumstances. Hallelujah. Amen. Going to the living God. Uh, we also see uh, the prophet Moses he was faced with, uh, with, with an, uh, an opportunity to make choice. a choice. Uh, he was raised uh, in a uh, very good home. Uh, almost he afforded almost everything in the house of Pharaoh. He was raised, but he had to make choice. When Pharaoh was looking to the children of Israel, children, Amen. So in life, God in all His might. In all his greatness, he requires us to make a choice. Hallelujah. In his simplicity, he requires us to make a choice. And whenever we make a choice, we should always make the right choice. Hallelujah. Amen. So Moses uh, had to make a choice to stay with God's people. And always the right choices, uh, they've got some rewards. When you make the right choice, there's always a reward for that. You are not wasting your time. Uh, you didn't waste your time to come for the service yeah, Amen. this afternoon. Right. There's always a reward for that. Amen. Amen. You could be doing something else, but you have to make a choice to come and be with God's people, Amen. to come and save the Lord with God's people. That was a choice. It is a beautiful choice. Hallelujah. Amen. May God help us. Amen. As you make choices, hallelujah. There was one time maybe the gospel was presented to you. Amen. And you have to make a choice. Amen. You have to forsake the things that were surrounding you. You have to forsake the things that you love so much. You have to make a choice to follow God's will. You have to make a choice to follow what God wanted in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. That was a beautiful choice. Amen. Amen. To be a Christian, to be a servant of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. So in life, we have to make a choice. Amen. Hallelujah. God in his, uh, you know, God is mighty, he's great. Uh, but he fails himself in simplicity. Amen. That sometimes uh, it takes the grace of God when you make our choices to make the right kind of choice because sometimes we may miss him if we are not careful like those that are going to a mosque and they that privilege uh, to speak to the Lord but God it may support them to realize that that's the same person that they were talking about when their eyes were opened to receive him hallelujah so may God help us amen to, to make the right kind of choices to see God in everything that we do hallelujah because God Fails himself in simplicity. Hallelujah. Abraham at one time just saw uh, men that were coming, that were passing by. Hallelujah. Three men. They were just looking like ordinary men. Probably they were just looking like the brother sitting next to you or the sister next, sitting next to you. Yeah. And they were just walking with dust on their feet. Hallelujah. I can imagine uh, if it happened in our day, <laughs> would we be able to accept uh, the presence of the Lord and to make the right choice and to invite them into our house with dirty feet? Hallelujah, in UK, they are coming into your house. You see men passing by with 30 feet. <laughs> Will you make the right kind of choice? Amen. Amen. Will you just make the right kind of decision to invite them in your house? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So Abraham, when he was looking at them, he didn't just see men. He saw uh, the Lord. He saw the King of Kings. Amen. He saw the mighty God himself. Hallelujah. Then he so in his simplicity, just took the boat of flesh. He despised the boat with dust on the feet. And he was just walking. Hallelujah. So the three men walking. He invited them to his house. Hallelujah. Abraham uh, had that privilege to make a decision. But he made the right 
kind of decision. Hallelujah. The God was made in so in flesh, in simplicity. But Abraham saw beyond the ordinary eye. He saw by faith that that was God. It invited him. Hallelujah. He made the right kind of a choice. So in life, we always uh, meet some challenges and we always have to make some choices. But we need God to help us to make the right kind of choices. Hallelujah. And the Lord, in most of the time, uh, He appears to us. Amen. But in simplicity. Hallelujah. He might appear to you. Uh, through uh, the brother sitting next to you, yeah. through somebody that even, uh, you, don't, you can't even imagine that, can the Lord use this kind of a person? Can the Lord sit, use this kind of a sister that's sitting next to me? Hallelujah, but the Lord fails himself uh, in simplicity. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, uh, most of the time when the Lord visits men, uh, he just fails himself in simple ways. Uh, people think that angels are uh, maybe they've got might, wings, and so forth, right? But uh, we read in the Bible that uh, many times we put somebody in, in, in a human form, taking a human form, and appearing. Hallelujah. God just choose that form to appear to men in a human form. But sometimes we may expect the Lord to come uh, in the form of a light. Of course, He does that. Hallelujah. But not always. Sometimes He can use somebody that you know. Somebody that always comes here for Sunday to preach, like Pastor Chikuni, <laughs> like Brother Pune, and so forth. Hallelujah. And choose that you know somebody that you can't even imagine. A brother that you fellowship with, but you drop something, but if you are not careful, you might miss the presence of God. You might miss the presence of God. You might miss uh, the presence of the God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the Lord even appeared to man, Gabriel, the angel, appeared to man. And we realized the whole Bible, there were people who were visited by angels, but they just appeared like men in the form of a human being, with a mystic man. Hallelujah. So, we have to be careful. And the Bible says, uh, don't forget to uh, entertain visitors. Uh, some have entertained angels and ways. Because uh, when you know the angels got wings and so forth, they've got an imagination. When it comes from that with wings, you, you, you easily know that this is an angel. Hallelujah. They won't miss that. But sometimes the Lord Jesus uh, simple things. Can be used of God. Hallelujah. So you should always be careful and allow God I mean, to lead us and give the grace to see whenever God wants to visit us. Amen. Amen. So sometimes angels they appear in, in, in simplicity, in simple forms. You know, sometimes uh, there are many times when Brother Ram saw that angel, he could come in a human form, hallelujah, Amen. and speak to the prophet in simplicity. So Amen. the Lord used that way so much. To speak to us just in simple ways, Lord, things, yes. simple things that you can't even imagine. Amen. Till we have to be humble and simple to see God. Hallelujah. Amen. Through simple things. Hallelujah. So God hides Himself in simplicity, but He requires us to make a choice. We have to make a choice. Amen. Young men, even in school, you have to make a choice. Amen. Amen. We have to pray for God's leadership to make the right kind of choice because you meet different circumstances that will force you. To make a choice, though you don't want to make a choice, but you might be forced to make a choice, and that choice will either be good or wrong. But you have to make a choice. Yes. You meet some friends, amen. Some of them, you know, we are living in a in a in a world that so you know things that just happening so hard, rapidly. Say that even these youngsters, they are meeting different temptations, hardships of life, you know. And if they find their friends, some of them they might be smoking and doing those evil things. So, due to peer pressure, you may be forced to engage in wrong things, to engage in things that are not right. Uh -huh. You know, I was, I was so touched one time, I saw a young man, a very young, but he was so involved in drugs and those things of the world here in the UK. And, you know, uh, you know, I just, my, uh, it disturbed me so much, I didn't know uh, what to do, but it disturbed me so much to see the things that are, uh, this generation is going through, our generation is going through, they are so hard, but we need the grace of God to make the right kind of choices. Right. Amen. Because in life, you need those circumstances where you have to make a choice, but you always have to make the right kind of a choice. Right. At one time, there was a young, rich, 
uh, a young uh, rich man, a young ruler who was very rich, and he came before the Lord and uh, wanted to speak to the Lord. He was well uh, groomed, he came from a well behaved house because even uh, his manners, you could tell by the manners of that young uh, rich ruler that he was well groomed because when he approached the Lord, he approached with humility, he knelt down to show he was humble, he was well groomed. Uh, he had an opportunity to meet the Lord. He had an opportunity to speak to the Lord, but Amen. he had to make a choice. Hallelujah. In life, always you have to make a choice. Amen. And we have to be careful to make the right kind of a choice. Amen. When we met the Lord, he knelt down and said, What shall I do? Amen. To inherit eternal life. And the Lord said, Speak to him. Uh, but he caught his spirit and said, Go and sell all that thou hast. Follow me, hallelujah. That's where his heart was. Sometimes the Lord touches the spot where your heart is. If you have glued to your money, the Lord knows. If you have glued to your vehicle, the Lord knows. If you have glued uh, to whatever you have glued to, the Lord knows that you are connected to this thing. But the Lord wants you to make the right kind of a choice. Amen. You know, when he was told to go and sell all that he had, it was heavy and hard upon him to do that because that's where his heart was on his riches. And he lost uh, the opportunity to eternal life because uh, he made the wrong kind of a choice. So in life, you should always be careful to make the right kind of a choice because the opportunity will always presented to us in different circumstances, in different situations. But we always have to make the right kind of a choice. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, poet to make uh, a choice, the prophet Paul. He had to make a choice. At one time, he was just going, persecuting the saints. Uh, no, sometimes God hides himself in simplicity. Yeah. In his people, he hides himself in his people. Amen. Yeah. So he thought he was just persecuting uh, common men, common people. Yeah. So he was just going in his normal business, persecuting the saints. But he didn't know that he was persecuting the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But on his way, one day, he had encountered with the angel of the Lord. Amen. He met the angel of the Lord. And the Lord spoke to him and said, Paul, so, so, why persecutest thou me? And from then, he saw the light struck him. Hallelujah. And he said, who are you, Lord, that I am persecuting? And the voice said, uh, I am the Lord Jesus Christ. So when he was persecuting the saints, he just thought he was just persecuting common people. <laughs> Hallelujah. May God help us to treat one another in the right way. Amen. And we need to make the right choices and treat one another in the right way. When you know that this is God's child, when you know this is the servant of the Lord, when you know that this is God's child, you know how to treat them. Amen. The Bible says, do good, especially to them, the household of faith. Hallelujah. So when it comes to the saints, you should know that if you are treating them, treat them right because uh, you are serving the Lord as you are serving his people. Hallelujah. So, so realize that all along he was going against the will of the Lord, persecuting the saints. Hallelujah. And from there, he had to make a choice to save the Lord. And when God was sending him uh, uh, for his deliverance, because he was temporarily blinded by that presence of the light, by that pillar of fire, he sent him to a common man, Ananias, to pray for him so that he can get his sight back. So, we should always be simple and allow God to lead us into the right choices. Amen. Because we always have to make a choice. If we don't make a choice, uh, we are always forced to make a choice in life. Hallelujah. But we need God to lead us into the right kind of a choice. Hallelujah. May God help us. Amen. Amen. You know, God is so mighty, uh, but you know, in his mightiness, he hides himself in simplicity. Yeah, the word says, uh, in heaven uh, uh, is his throne and the earth is his footstool. But in all that mightiness, he can come and veil himself behind a human body, in the human heart, amen, and hide himself there. When the brother sings, hallelujah, God can sing through the brother, amen. Yeah. When the brother speaks, God can speak through uh, a brother, a single brother or a single sister, hallelujah, yeah. because he is the mighty God, but he can hide himself in that simplicity. Yeah. I mean, revealing himself to his people, hallelujah, yeah. because that's the simplicity of God. Yeah. But that simplicity requires us to make a choice in our lives. Yeah. But when we make that choice, we have to make the right kind of choice. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. Yeah. You know, 
uh, Moses being the servant of the Lord, uh, he was used by God, but uh, at one time, uh, after, he had, he had, uh, after he had made the right kind of a choice uh, to follow the Lord, We should, we shouldn't be afraid of circumstances because when we make the right kind of choices we are following God's word we are following God's will God will always beg his word yeah. he always stand with his word Amen. 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 Hallelujah. so many times we always have to make uh, choices but we have to make the right kind of choices Amen, Amen. Uh, you know I like the story of, of, of King David and uh, King Saul Amen you know, all these uh, were great kings. So as a king, David was a king, and they were anointed in the days of Simon the prophet. You know, there was a time when uh, uh, the children of Israel, they wanted a king. Before that, God was leading them through uh, his, uh, his, his way, his system. He wanted them to be led uh, by his spirit through his prophets. Amen. Hallelujah. But uh, they cried and they wanted a king. They wanted to be like other nations. Because... King, but uh, when Samuel the prophet, when he saw him, he saw that he uh, looked 
Shual like a king. So he anointed him to be king. He became the king of the children of Israel. But there was something there. Uh, there's something that I want to draw your attention to about Samuel, about Saul the king and David the king. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So I want to read from the book of Samuel about this story. So all these kings, they were all kings, they served the Lord and in their, in their positions, but there's something, there's a difference about them. Uh, First Samuel chapter 15. So, uh, Paul, uh, Saul was presented an opportunity to make a choice. Mm. But you want to look at the kind of choice that he made. Hallelujah. Because sometimes God hides himself in simplicity. Right. Amen. Amen. So, First Samuel chapter 15. Um, the Lord had spoken to So went and, and he destroyed the Amalekites, but he also destroyed, uh, uh, let's read from this, uh, Instead of utterly destroying them, when God had instructed him to go and utterly destroy and he preserved Arthur the king. Hallelujah. So now the Lord was so displeased because so he had not obeyed God's word. He had made the right, the wrong kind of a choice in preserving Arthur and those fatalities instead of destroying those things. The Lord knew that those things were supposed to be destroyed, yet the reason why He said go and destroy it all. So sometimes the Lord, God's word comes, we should always observe what the Lord wants for us. Amen. Yeah. So He preserved those things and the Lord was displeased and did to send Samuel the prophet. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, so there's something now, uh, uh, in verse uh, 22 says, and Samuel say, said, Yet the Lord has great light in burnt offerings and sacrifices uh, is in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and Amen. to make it than uh, the fate of rams. 
For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, uh, he had also rejected thee from being king. Hallelujah. So now, so is rejected now from being king because he had disobeyed God's word. Hallelujah. So I want you to notice something. There's something special. I want to bring a comparison between uh, King Saul and King David. So that you can see uh, that God hides himself in simplicity. He just wants us to make the choice to be humble, to be simple, and make the right kind of choices. Amen. Amen. So now Saul is rejected from being king. Hallelujah. Yet he sinned before the Lord, he did not obey God's word. And now God says, I know the prophet, Saul is rejected. Now, now therefore, uh, uh, now, and Samuel said unto uh, and so said unto Samuel, this is now so King Saul speaking to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore I pray thee pardon my sin. He's now speaking to Samuel. Uh, he's looking at Samuel, the prophet, he not realized that this sin is sinned against the Lord. But just see as if it's just a common thing he sinned against the man of God. But he wants the man of God to forgive him. He said, I feared the people. So when he went to destroy uh, the Amalekites, when he went to destroy, uh, he, he, to do what God instructed him to do, in his mind, he wanted uh, to do what people wanted. Because the people wanted him to preserve, they brought a very good idea. But now the Lord didn't want all those things. He wanted to utterly destroy. So now he says, he feared the, the people. He had respect, much respect for the people instead of the Lord. But now we see uh, this King David. These people are different. You know, King David also was involved uh, in a sin and uh, uh, he was supposed uh, to, uh, to be punished. You know what happened uh, to King David. But he was supposed to Uh, he always feared people so much that he, he, even, he couldn't even repent himself. Uh, if you read verse 25, therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn uh, again 
uh, with me that I may worship the Lord. He wanted like status. He wanted uh, the prophet Samuel to take with him to walk with him as if everything was normal. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord yet rejected thee from being uh, king over Israel. And Samuel turned uh, about to go away and laid a hold upon, uh, and he laid a uh, hold upon the skirt of his meadow and rent it. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent uh, the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and yet given it to a uh, neighbor of thine that is better than thou. Uh, on verse 8, the Bible says, Then he said, I have sinned, uh, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. So Saul's so, uh, attention was upon the people. He wanted uh, the people, that was his focus, but did not care about repenting, total repentance before God. Amen. So, with what he had done, with the sin that he had made, he was supposed to repent. If you are humble and simple enough to respect God and humble ourselves, God will uplift us, God will help us. Amen. Amen. So that's why the Bible says, uh, David, uh, uh, God says, David, a man after my own heart. He was a man that could humble himself, that could even repent, and Amen. God honored David because he was a man that took the right decision to follow the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's the simplicity of God. God hides himself in simplicity. He requires us to make the choice. And if we make some choices, we have to make the right kind of choices. Hallelujah. Amen. It reminds me of, of, of Ruth. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Ruth had to make a right kind of a choice at one time. Uh, when she was going with Naomi, Naomi uh, she had to follow a woman and she made the right, of, uh, the right choice to follow God's will, to go with a woman. Hallelujah. So we have to make the right kind of choices. Like Esther, Esther had to make the right kind of choice. Amen. She had to uh, meet and stay with God's will. Hallelujah. No matter whatever the circumstance was, she had to stand with the will of God and stand with God's people. Hallelujah. Said, if I die, she had a problem before him. She had a challenge. Hallelujah. And they were afraid. But Esther said, if I die, let me die. She made a covenant within her heart and purposed within her heart to go and meet the king. Amen. She purposed in her heart. always stand by God's word and make the right kind of a choice. Amen. God wants us to make the right choice. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Esther had to make the right choice. Amen. At one time, there was uh, Rebecca. Amen. Rebecca, uh, uh, Abraham wanted to, uh, uh, the bride wanted to choose, the, uh, wanted uh, Isaac, to find a bride for Isaac. Amen. So, Rebecca was presented with the opportunity to become Isaac. Uh, right, but she had to make the right choice. Amen. Amen. The choice was presented to her to make that choice. Amen. And she made the right choice before the Lord. So we need God to guide us into Amen. the right choices in life. Amen. Sometimes situations they compare us. Amen. But in other those circumstances, we always remember to make the right choice. Amen. There is a choice you can choose to come for the service. Amen. And break the cold weather. It's a choice. You can choose to be in service during the white time. It's a choice. You can choose to save the Lord. Amen. In opposing situations, it's a choice. Amen. You have to make a choice. There are several choices in life, but you always have to make a choice. Amen. And that choice has to be the right choice that pleases the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 
You know, Grab Branham at one time was presented by that opportunity to make a choice. Amen. He says, I could have repented when I was 12 years old. But you know, the devil was coming on his way, trying to stop him and delay him. But thank God, he made the right choice to... Said you have chosen a narrow path, amen. Oh, yeah. a harder way, and the one has chosen, amen. amen. And the boys, he stood by that choice. Yeah. Right. He had the opportunity to make millions of money, yeah. but he right. forsook all those things amen. and made the right kind of a choice. Right. Hallelujah, brother, sister. We always have to make a choice amen. and stand by our choice, stand by that choice, and be fully convinced that this is the right choice, amen. amen. Because this world that we are living in, things will happen, amen. Our circumstances will happen and we have to make a choice. Amen. Amen. I can uh, imagine in the days of the disciples when the Lord Jesus Christ was going to be crucified. It was a hard moment. It was a time of persecution. But they had to make a choice. Amen. Amen. Peter stood. He wanted to make a choice. Amen. To stay with the Lord. He was better than other disciples, I think, because uh, the others they ran away, but he stood. He went uh, all the way. But later on, though he denied the Lord Jesus Christ, but he tried. Amen. Okay. And that was before they received the Holy Ghost. But after they received the Holy Ghost, he stood and uh, stood with this, the right choice. Amen. Amen. But he, in those circumstances, in those situations, those hardships, he had to stand with the right choice. Amen. I can imagine, I was just imagining, if I was there during the days of Peter. And, you know, under those circumstances, in that persecution, I really needed the Lord to stand and make the right choice. Amen. Otherwise, without God's grace, I would have did what Peter did to deny him. Hallelujah before the people. But to thank God for the Holy Ghost because when he received the Holy Ghost, he went and preached those people. He stood by the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. So we always have to make the choice. Amen. Like Daniel. Amen. At one time, Daniel uh, had to make a choice. Either to stand by God's word or, or to worship an image, amen. To worship the image, hallelujah. But Daniel kept was in his heart that he was not going to defile himself, amen. amen. With the things of Babylon, he was not going to bow down to an image, he was going to serve the Lord, amen. But sometimes you are put to a test, you are put to a squeeze, amen, to make sure that the decision that you have made, amen, are you going to stand in that decision, uh -huh. amen, or you are going to. You are going to uh, reject the Lord. Amen. We are going to give up. Amen. We are always going to a test like Daniel. Amen. He was put to a test, but he stood right. with God's word. He stood with the right choice. That's so right. in life, you should always make the right kind of choice. Yeah. And the yeah. thing is, uh, when you are making a choice, you make your choice. You don't follow the uh, crowds, you don't follow the multitudes. But it's an individual choice that you have to make honestly before the Lord. Amen. That's the kind of choice that you have to make. You have to present yourself and make the decision for yourself before the Lord. Amen. Like Shepherd, Mr. Gelapet, Nico, they were in Babylon. They were facing the hardships of Babylon. Amen. Others were in the cities of Babylon. Others were doing all those sorts of things. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, back what's in their heart. They said, we are going to save these gods. We are going to save the Lord, the God Almighty. Hallelujah. So, we, you are going to make a choice anyhow. But you should make the right kind.
But if it's the right choice, amen. Some people may laugh at you, they may not understand you, but if you make a right choice, the Lord will stand with you. Amen. amen. I remember at one time the prophet uh, he went to see a certain sister by the name of Sister Eight, right? He was there, they were just fellowshipping around the world. But Sister Eight right, felt something as the way it was, as the prophet was giving a testimony. She just spoke and made the right kind of a choice. She said, Prabhupada does nothing but the truth. Amen. And yeah, she yeah. just have kept quiet. Maybe that was the safe. She would just have kept quiet and said, I know. Uh, I know I'm a quiet person. I don't say amen when the Holy Spirit. I don't claim my hands in the song when they're I don't I don't support you with the song leader when they sing. I don't sing because I'm a quiet person. But she said, No, that's nothing but the truth. Amen. 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 And the prophet was moved to say, Sister, just say anything that you want and the Lord will do it. Amen. Amen. That was a decision that she took against the odds. Amen. So we have to take a decision in life. Amen. And we should not follow the. Amen. So, she made the right choice and the Lord was pleased by that choice. Amen. And she was given the desires of her heart. Amen. So, in life, we are always faced with those circumstances where God uh, presents us opportunities where we can make some choices. Amen. And we have to make the right kind of a choice. Amen. You know, uh, certain times God, God allow, allows us to go through hardships of life so that we make choices. Yes, and yes. those choices, uh, make the right choices. We we'll seek God through those choices. Amen. 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 So we have to make the right kind of a choice, regardless of circumstances. Amen. Amen. Uh, like what uh, the things that God does. Uh, there are a lot of examples in the Bible where people have to make some choices. Amen. And there are also some people who make wrong choices, Amen. and they face uh, the consequences of making wrong choices. And there are also those that made good choices and. Ah, uh, the word was great for them. Hallelujah. But in life, we always have to make a choice regardless of circumstances. Amen. And when you make the right choice, God will always back you up. Amen. So that even when you meet circumstances, even aspects of life, God will back you. I remember the prophet one time who was hungry. He was in the mountains. Amen. And there was a storm that was coming. That's right. In that, those circumstances where things were hard. Amen. And he was running away from the storm. Uh, but the Lord appeared to him and said, Go back. Mm. Amen. Sometimes you may be running from your enemy. Mm -hmm. You may don't know what to do, but because of the choice that you make, Amen. God will not leave you alone. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The, 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 God spoke to him and said, Go back. Amen. Amen. To face that enemy. Amen. When you are a child of God. Amen. Sometimes you may run away from your problem. But God appeared to the prophet and said, Go back. Spoke Amen. to him and said, Go back. Amen. Hallelujah. He had to go and meet that situation. He had to go and meet that circumstance. Amen. Amen. And this was going back. God spoke to him to speak to the storm. Yes. And he spoke to the storm and there was calmness. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So God always back his way. Make the right choices. God will back his way. Amen. Amen. As I'm coming to a close, I want to read uh, uh, this quotation. So that you get encouraged. So we always have to make uh, a choice. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, from 59 level, uh, uh, 1119, uh, the prophet says here, that's where if man has to come to in life uh, sometimes, is make a decision. You have to make a choice. You had to make a choice whether you was going to have education or not. You had to make a choice. Uh, you had to make a choice. Who was going to be your wife? You had to. There, there had to be decisions and choices made in life. Then uh, he says here, and. 
it may be this morning that there will be men and women sitting here that will make final uh, choice. You are today what you are because several years ago you chose to be what you are now. Amen. Amen. So, some choices they will determine your future. Amen. They will determine your destiny. Yes. You make a simple choice sometimes, but it will determine your future. So, all right. the choices that you make, you should be careful to have the leadership of God and make the right kind of choices and have the leadership of the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. That will make your final choice. You are today what you are because several years ago you chose to be what you are now. And what you chose now will determine what you will be five years from today. Five years from today you may be a missionary. Five years Amen. from today you may be a real non Christian. Amen. The prophet is now explaining five years today you may be a missionary. You may be a real non Christian <laughs> just because of a choice. Or five years from today, you may be in hell because you made the wrong decision. Five years from today, you may be uh, cleaning uh, pitons in, in a bar room. Five years uh, from today, you may be a prostitute or on the street. Or you may be a man or woman that, that's a credit to any society because of your choice for Christ. Five years from today, you may be in glory. Uh, born in the rapture because you made your choice. Yeah. But you've got to make a choice and don't look at what you see. Choose what you see by faith. That's the only thing that will count is what you choose by faith. Amen. Amen. So he says you have to choose by faith, not just what you see, but you have to choose For we are identified in the uh, we are identified in the God of the same God that He was identified in. So if we are identified in that
what a wonderful and yet simple but deep teacher. Five years from now, you could be a credit to your family. Can you put that quote? Bible study on Friday. 
and we were reading about the names that are blotted out of the book of life. I want my name to stay there. Amen. The prophet of God says that make your final choice. You are today what you are because several years ago you chose to be what you are now. Brother, I chose to be what I am. My friend, when I went to the first message church we were attending, I went with my friend and we were both in the same church. We both had the same message. But when the minister was preaching, it was so hot. I heard Mama Eagle scream, Come up higher! And I said, Amen! My friend heard it. It was a rebuke. You are a chicken. And he said, I'm not going to come back to this church. My own friend! Is the choice that I made Amen. that makes me to be what I am to be. And let me encourage you that what you will be five years from today. When you are starting, he said, even the food that you eat, the choice of the food that you eat, you get my mind. Either you are going to be struggling with the, some things that we can avoid. Me, I'm included also. And I said, thank you, Lord. You are confirming my desire. We have to be a people that are not scared of making decisions. Do you know that there's a time when you started to test it, you felt that there's sugar in something? There's a time when you started to test it, you felt there was salt in something. Don't allow the devil to rob you of your good health. You can make a choice and say, Lord, I am going to start to make sure that I do portion control. You think when we invited the sisters from Nigeria, it was Sister Yabu. She told us about portion control. Please pass our greetings to them. And Sister Elizabeth Pinkra, she came to my house and she told us about the body cycle. How the body, you know, you wake up in the morning and the anti signs and all that, they are not ready for this and that. But how that people wake up and they start packing in that sugar. And I said, this kind of an elder sister, I, I want it close to me. So that she can keep telling me, hey, 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 hey. It's a choice, brothers. Some of they've had the same sisters talking and they said, I'm not going to take it in their phone number. I don't want anything to do with that. It's a choice. But I made a choice. I said, Lord, I want to learn more. And I'm learning. Let's continue with this. I'm passing through all the angles because our brother, he was going like a bullet. He went exactly one right now. Ah, let's appreciate our brother. Right, but let's finish this quotation. I want to repeat it because it is nothing. It says here, you could be a missionary. When we talk about these things, you think we're just talking. Move away from this life of just routine. Don't be a person of routine. You come here, you hear the prophet says, you can be a non Christian, a Christian, you can be a non Christian, and you just want to continue in your routine. What's wrong with you? We give you a platform to buy people Bibles. You can spare McDonald's, which will take you to bed health, and buy Bibles for people. And then you do, you say, Ah, no, this is for Brother Basmo and some of his friends. You think we are crazy? We are giving you a platform to make a choice, a choice that will determine your place in heaven. You know, when you go up there, I'm going to read you another quotation when the prophet of God was told, a great portion awaits you in heaven because of the choice that you've made. You know, people like this gospel where everybody is, uh, is, is doing well. No, I want a gospel that makes you think. I want a gospel that you can practicalize and bring into life. You can make a choice to say, if my mother tells me I shouldn't do this, I'll just not do it. 
I may not understand, but I will just say, because it's my mother, she knows better. We have come to church so we can make choices. I want you to make a choice. When you go back home, don't just hear the preachers preach. Some of these things they need you to be fasting and praying. And you just say amen. You go back home, you don't make an attempt, you don't make an effort, you don't even move an inch. You come back the second Sunday, you are still the same person. You think we put those books there to display? And then you say, hello, me, uh, me and me, I've got my everything is on my phone. My Bible is on my phone. And I'm saying, let, 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 me, let me ask you a question. Those of you that were in the Bible study on Friday, the deepness of the teaching that was in there, do you think you can follow that through just listening? Don't lie to yourself. So when you say, read them books, we know what they're doing. You think God does not know what he was doing. When he wrote on the table, and he gave Moses. He had spoken to them and they had thunders. When he spoke to them, they had thunders. But then he had to write it down so that they can read. And they can go back and refer to it. And then you are sitting there saying, I oh, know this issue of books is for the old school. Which old school? It's the only difference that it reads so fast. And it will summarize what it has read from the world. And you are like, oh me, I don't pray. In prayer, you are not found. Fasting, you are not found. Reading the spoken word books, you are not found. Reading the Bible, you don't even have a Bible. If you have got it, you don't even know the last time you opened it for a while. Coming to church, you come, and you are always the one looking for the throne. What choice are you making? What choice are you making? Parents, our children, they don't learn from us telling them, do this, do this. They learn from see. If they see you always glued up on your mobile phone, and then you say, don't be on your phone, you are glued up. If we find the time that you are glued up, your phone can tell you you've been on the phone for three hours a day. What are you doing on that phone? Make a choice. And say, I am going to bring control to my, to my desire of this thing. You leave this shot, you finish, you go to the next shot, that's your choice. You go to Facebook, you leave this reel, you go to the next reel, you also try to create your own reel, you then follow to check how many views are there now. You are wasting time. That's right. Make a choice. Let me, let me bring it home. He's, he preached it in the high level there. I want to bring it home. Let's make choices. Let's invest in our families. How do you invest in your family? Invest in your family. The husband eats there in the bedroom. The wife eats there in the kitchen. The, the children, they eat while they are at the couch and they are watching football. What choices are you making? Bring discipline to the home. You sisters, bring discipline to the home. Let me not scream and scream and continuously scream. If it means you have to eat when they come back from school at 4 p.m. while you are all there, do it before you go to work. I am not screaming for the sake of screaming, no. I am screaming that your life will improve. Your experience as a family of quality time will improve and you will reap the benefits, not you want to do. The prophet of God says that all of five years from today you may be in hell because you made the wrong choices. Five years from today you may be cleaning spit within a bathroom. Five years today you may be a prostitute in the streets. Let me tell you something. To be a prostitute you don't need to be sleeping with too many men. No. You just need to be walking around naked. You make a choice and say I'm going to be a modest, a modest woman. A woman that will, when I'm walking, People say, there goes a woman who knows how to dress. Amen. Yes, sir! Amen. You don't want when you're walking, every man is 
struggling means now just following you. Even those that are driving are now about to go out of road. And then you say, no, this is beauty. Let me tell you something. You is one from the dead. I am going to give him back to the Lord. Why? Because you would have caught the mind of God. When you enter into the laboratory and you catch the mind of God, you are able to translate what God is giving inspiration to you into your life and you'll be able to live it. And people say, there was a living scripture. The scripture says, by faith, so and so refused to be told. By faith, so and so did this. That faith is revelation, spiritual revelation of what God wants you to do. Lord, he made a choice. And Abraham, he gave him this choice. But Abraham also made a choice. Brother, you can make a choice this afternoon. Let's just sing that song. Whatever you are, just bow your heads down. <coughs> and I want to pray with you. Whatever choice that you are making. This includes even the young people, those that can hear. I want young people to be taught to close their eyes. If you are there, you are saying, Lord, I'm making a choice. I want to walk with you. He has given us examples of Moses. He has given us examples of Ruth. Ruth had the choice to stay with the people in Moab. But she says, yes, I'm going to go with you now. You can make a choice, brother, to stay with the message. You can make a choice, brother, to stay with the word. You can say, Lord, yes, for me in my house, like Joshua said, I will save the Lord. Lord, I come before your presence this afternoon. Behold your children, their hands have gone up. My hands are up as well. For Lord, we are looking into the scriptures. We are seeing ourselves every day. We are saying, Lord, our lives are full of choices. Even right now, we are making a choice. These hands, Almighty God, Thou knowest what is behind them. Thou knowest what your children are saying. Thou knowest what the desire is about. Maybe somebody is making a choice. That Lord, I am going to be a good young man. I am going to obey the instructions of my mother, the law of my father. Like the scripture teaches us, Lord, to bind them around the neck. And in that there will be a lamp in the right hand to me. Somebody is praying and saying, Lord, I have made up my mind. I want to leave these things on the world. I do not want to bring them closer to my life. I am going to utterly destroy. All the Amalekites. I don't want to bring some, some, some.
Somebody is raising their hand. They are saying, Lord, I want to see you every day of my life. And I'm making a choice. Lord, before I do anything, I want you to give me the revelation of what I should be doing. Oh, Father, we thank you. Because you have given us a prophet in this day. Whom you told. Because you made this decision. It is your decision to follow my word. It is the hard decision. But because you have made it of your own choosing, a great portion awaits you in heaven. Lord, may this, my brothers and sisters, may a great portion be found awaiting for them, even after this service. Lord, in their own place. Lord, I pray for somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I like to remember David. Your children are humbling themselves. They are saying, Lord, remember me. I am also praying with them, Lord. I am saying, Lord, remember your children. Somebody is calling upon thy name. Lord, like, like that, like, like, like that, 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 that man, now under Syrian, who made a choice to go, to consult, even of Elisha the prophet. Somebody is saying, Lord, like blind, but they are, they are saying, Lord, I believe there is healing for me in the name of Jesus Christ. They are making a choice to stand with your word. Father, may you manifest even in their body. May you create again the cells that are needed that they may enjoy good health in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, Lord, I want to read my Bible every day. Lord, may you give them strength. May you meet with them when they go into their prayer closet. Somebody say, Lord, I want my children to make it even as believers. Father, may you help them as parents that together we may do the work and that we may see our children crossing. We have made that decision this afternoon. We thank you for our brother blessing, whom we have used so mightily. We ask you bless him and his wife, grant them a safe journey, even as they travel back to Amati. Father, may you bless us, even this afternoon, as we shall be having the music practice and everything that we need to do. May your blessings even continue to be with us. The name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Also say amen. 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 Amen.